Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which you might be able to see around me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I want to talk about the plant that is right next to me. And this, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, is the Hoya Polynura. And let me see if I can bring it in, and I want to see if the camera is picking it up properly. I might have to just bring it in a bit closer, just so you can see the true beauty of the foliage of this plant. If you look at the leaves, and you can see the growth pattern there, the common name for this Hoya, for the Hoya Polynera, is Fishtail Hoya, or even Mermaid Hoya, and you might be able to see exactly why based on those leaves. Now, you might be able to see as well, if I turn this around, I don't know whether or not this is going to get picked up properly either. Oh, you might be able to see, yes, there are some spent blooms that are coming out now and they're all going to be dropping soon. But this plant was heavily in bloom. Let me just put it back up because I thought that might be the best place to have it whilst we talk about this. The blooms this year for me on this plant were plentiful. I think I got peduncles onto every single vine that is on this Hoya specifically. And let's talk a bit more about it. I did show this a while ago and talked about this when I first got it, but since then it has grown in leaps and bounds. And you might be able to, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, that you might have been able to see that there are two hooks that attach it to the ceiling. And the reason for that is I've actually since moved this into Lechuza Pond as well. And it's very heavy. So <laughs> that would be why. Now, the fact that this is a very sought after Hoya is something I cannot deny. And it's mainly because the foliage is so unique and because it does look a bit like whilst well, getting whacked by the Hoya by the Hoya uh, that is quite unique and it looks like a fish tail or even a mermaid tail. The blooms, I have to say, they're very kind of standard Hoya blooms. There's nothing specifically exciting about the way that the blooms look. This is definitely a dripper of a Hoya. So it will, uh, for those of you that have had Hoya bloom, most Hoya will have this nectar that comes off the blooms and drips everywhere and it's like a sugary syrup. So just bear that in mind when it is in bloom, especially if it's in the slightly warmer months, this might attract things like ants. So just bear that in mind. I have seen several people put plastic bags around their Hoya blooms just because they drip so profusely. This one does drip. It doesn't drip a huge amount, but it still does drip, especially when it's laden with blooms like this one was. Now, you've seen me talk about the, uh, growing a Hoya up something in other videos. So generally speaking, most Hoyas will grow faster for a Hoya. I will always, <laughs> I will always caveat that because Hoyas are generally slow growers. Actually, the other thing, I don't know whether or not some people might be aware of the common name for a lot of Hoyas is wax plant and the reason why it's called a wax plant is because the blooms and I'm trying to see if there's one that you might be able to see maybe I'll bring it in a bit closer so you can see what the bloom looks like but the blooms look like porcelain flowers and hopefully that's going to focus if I put my head behind it there you go you can see some of those blooms you can also see on that leaf you can see some of the the nerves that are coming off the leaf so it is kind of an ornate leaf as well let me put it back up i don't want to keep moving it too much because this will snap quite easily but very very cool hoya and as i was mentioning with most hoyas they would want to climb up something and they will get they will grow faster. I don't think they necessarily grow bigger leaves, but they will grow faster if you give them something to vine up. Because essentially the way that they do this, they don't send little tendrils out. I'm thinking about the scissors disc collar because that is part of the grape family. So those will send little tendrils and wrap around it. It's not like an ivy where an ivy will have very, very intense aerial roots of the entirety of the stem and it will attach to a wall. But with most Hoyas, they will wrap the stem itself around something in order to give it support. So you might need to guide it along a bit in the beginning, but most of the times they'll kind of get the hint. Support sticks, janky support sticks are your friend there, more so than potentially a moss pole. You can also get these other trellisy things where there's multiple kind of tiers and levels to it as well. You can probably find it online, I won't bore you. 
but this is a Hoya that doesn't do that. This is one of the few Hoya that is a trailing Hoya and you might be able to see behind it another example of a trailing Hoya where you will not grow this up something, it does need to cascade down, which is the Hoya linearis, which is also currently, and hopefully that is being picked up, in bloom. So the difference of that, let's talk about the blooms really quickly again. With the Hoya linearis, for instance, it does have a nice scent to it, and that is a lemony scent. This one, at least in my opinion, doesn't have much of a scent to talk about. And even when I was looking online, there was a lot of people that kind of had similar experiences to me. The other thing that's a bit tricky sometimes with Hoya, where people were just like, oh, mine doesn't smell at all. Why does other people smell? It smells during the evenings and during the early mornings. So that's gonna be the time when you can smell it. During the day, and I was always convinced that the linearis had no scent because I tended to try and smell and see if there was any scent to it during the day, but obviously there was none. When I did it in the evening, I was just like, oh, it's a pleasant lemon smell. So that was kind of cool. But this one doesn't really do that even in the winter. Now, the other thing about the Polynera is I think from what I've seen does propagate quite easily. I've not personally propagated it. I've given quite a few cuttings of this to friends and I think they've had success in propagating it. I know some people in the States who are trying to grow one or two vines of this have struggled a bit generally with this Hoya, but if they are still struggling, I would say maybe try propagating it in something like Pond and that will do quite well. It's really loving life in Pond at the moment with this one. But that does lead me quite nicely into another topic, which again, this is another similarity between the Polynera and the Linearis, is for a Hoya, where most Hoyas, even the succulent leaf one, and this one definitely does have a bit more of a succulent leaf, they tend to want to go fully dry before you water them, otherwise they will get root rot quite easily. And as with most Hoyas, the same thing goes with this. It doesn't have very chunky roots. It's kind of not very fine. They're not to the same level as like the hair-like roots that you would get with, for instance, a begonia. But there's not a substantial root system. This one specifically does have one but this is also, I got it as a relatively mature plant and it has since matured even more, so it does have quite a few roots in there. But both this and the Linearis, they like to remain moist and not going fully dry. So bear that in mind, I'm not saying to treat this like a Calathea or an Alocasia or even a Fern. You still want this to go towards dry, but not fully dry. Clear as mud? It's a bit of a tricky one to get right, and I think that's probably why some people have struggled a bit with both the Linearis and the Polynera when it comes to propagation or even keeping it. The other thing to bear in mind, I think if I'm not mistaken, for both of these Hoyas actually, and it's quite handy that they're both in the same shop, um, they are plants that come from higher altitudes generally. And I'm pretty sure that they both do actually. And that links in quite nicely in when I have seen these Hoyas bloom for me, and both of these will bloom a lot when the season changes from the summer months to the autumn months. And that kind of makes sense because both of these plants do appreciate and they do a bit better in the winter and in the autumn months because they do like the slightly cooler nighttime temperatures. They really do start perking up quite a bit. You might be able to see some bleaching potentially on some of these leaves that are maybe a bit more brightly colored. It's because I'm giving this a lot of light. This one more so than the Linearis. The Linearis definitely needs kind of a diffuse light, but this one can really take bright, bright light as I will give to most of my Hoyas, to be fair. Now, in terms uh, of pests for this one, <laughs> Again, this might just be in my situation because I've been talking about this for a while. Unfortunately, this property doesn't have an awful lot of pests, but the pests that it does have in abundance in this conservatory, and I'm still trying to get on top of it, and I think I probably always will, is mealybugs. This, like most Hoyas, if you get a mealybug, it generally won't kill the plant unless it's a very heavy infestation. And the one thing I will say about mealybugs is you might want to also check the roots of specific Hoyas because you can get root mealybugs and they might be sitting there gnawing on the very small amount of roots that are already in the pot. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, mealybugs are a bit of a pain with this one because there's so many nooks and crannies and the, the way that the plant grows and the way that the leaves grow on the stem, it can be a bit of a challenge. In terms of watering, as I said, just 
make sure that you're watering before it goes fully dry. If you've got it in soil, a moisture meter would definitely be your friend for this one, especially if it's a very unique plant and you want to keep it happy. I'd say invest in one if you don't already have one. And fertilizing, even in the winter, as with most of my plants, every second or third watering, and it's loving life, bright, bright light, no support needed, it's definitely a trailing plant. It's a very, very cool trailing plant, but just bear in mind, the larger it gets, because it's such succulent leaves, the, the linearis leaves and the stems are actually quite light generally. And actually this is getting quite dense now, so that even this is getting heavy, but this is definitely quite heavy. So just bear in mind that whatever you've got it hanging from will be able to take the weight. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the Hoya pollinera or the fishtail Hoya. If you've got any questions or comments, as always, do drop them down below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.